Hi Church, my name's Paula, I'm one of the area pastors um, from the Central Manchester campus and it's my absolute pleasure to share with you today about one of my favourite people from the Bible and um, she is someone that doesn't even have a name, she's just known as a simple woman um, but rather than being defined by her sin, she actually became known um, and, def and kind of known for and famous for this one beautiful act um, of worship that she poured out to Jesus. And it's found in Luke 7, 36 to 50. Um, and we find Jesus is reclining at a table at his friend's house, literally having a meal. Um, and this woman hears that um, Jesus is, is in town. She brings her alabaster jar full of perfume and um, proceeds to weep tears that she then um, allows to, to wash the feet of Jesus. She then dries his feet with her hair and then pours the perfume from her jar all over his feet. And um, this is just a beautiful um, moment of worship and one that I would just love, you know, when people talk about if there's one time in history you could go back to, I would love to have been there to have seen that. Um, so I've got three things um, that I've taken away from that. And I'm sure there's many, many more. Um, the first is she came prepared to worship Jesus. Um, she brought her jar. She It's not something she would have, I don't think, had carrying around in her handbag. But she came prepared. And, and it just made me think, how often are we coming prepared to worship Jesus? And I'm not even just referring to worship on a Sunday. But we're called to live lives that are poured out in worship to Jesus. And how are we preparing ourselves to do that? How are we planning to to our day to be poured out in worship to Jesus um, because I do believe that we can do that we can prepare our hearts we can prepare our minds um, and so yeah it's just to to think about you know how are you doing that how are we doing that the second thing is she knew what she was known for she knew she was under no illusions she would have heard the whispers she knew she was known as a sinful woman and um but I think sometimes I was thinking about this and sometimes I don't know about you, maybe it is just me, but sometimes I think it's very easy to almost forget what we've been saved from. We know we're redeemed. We know we're saved. We know we're washed clean by the blood of the lamb. And, but sometimes we can, we can almost forget our sin and forget that, or, or I can. And um, I just think, we can become a bit a bit too complacent um, in that. And so, um, you know, we can use phrases like, oh, he lift me from the miry clay, but what did that actually look like? What has he saved me from? Um, and we can forget just how dirty we were before Jesus washed us clean. Um, in Psalms 103, um, verse 2, it says, um, let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things that he does for me. So church, let us... Um, kind of reflect on how far Jesus has brought us um, and so that that can be the driving force of our worship not so that we can bring the shame back in that Jesus has taken away but just so that we can use that as the force for our worship and use that as the kind of reflection of oh this is what Jesus did for me. The third thing um, that I took away from this is she just couldn't stop herself from worshipping Jesus. She found out he was in the town. She wasn't even there. She found out he was in the town. She made her way there. She will have probably rushed because she didn't want to miss him. And, um, you know, despite wondering what will people think, maybe even thinking, I don't even know what Jesus is going to think. She couldn't stop herself from pouring out worship onto Jesus. And um, let us just, church, let us just pour out our worship to Jesus in spirit and in truth. Let um, us even be even more undignified than this. Let us let us um, just go and worship Jesus. Sometimes we get so caught up in what other people um, might think or might say or that we're not good enough. But if we can just focus on Jesus as this sinful woman did and worship him as she teaches us, that then we can... that. That, um, that that can become what defines us. Who we worship, not what we've done and what others say, can become what defines us. 
Um, and like I say, there's so many other things you could take away from this. Um, so I uh, suggest you go and just spend some time reading this account because it's, it's just packed um, with amazing um, truths in there. Um, so yeah, I'll just pray. Um, Father, thank you um, for teaching us from the life of this sinful woman. And thank you, Jesus, that you were not um, in that moment interested in her sin, but in her faith and help us to prepare ourselves in worship um in our for to worship you in our every step um not just on sunday um but in every moment of our every day let us not forget what you've done for us and as a response allow us to put all other things aside focus on you so that we can cannot help but worship you we love you lord amen have a great day church thanks for sharing with me